going on, teachers and parents, and welcome to Math Unlocked, where I get to offer you strategies for teaching math for grades three, four, and five. My name is Miss McCarthy. I'm the creator of McCarthyMathAcademy.com, and I am on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for you so that you can get out there and support the students that you work with. In today's episode, we will be breaking down a fourth grade skill involving division with a one digit divisor okay so let's not waste any more time let's get to it and let me teach you first things first i caught a typo over here this will be the partial quotients method all right so you can see here we have um 397 divided by six this right here is called our dividend okay that is like the total that we are going to be dividing. And the divisor comes next. This is what we, how many groups we're dividing by into groups of six. And what we're trying to figure out is the answer, which has a fancy name. It's called the quotient. Um, you're going to see down here we have, today we're gonna to be looking at the standard algorithm, AKA long division the area model, and the partial quotients method. There are three different methods that we will cover today. Now, here's the thing. Fourth graders and teachers and parents, what I hear from them the most is like, I don't understand division because there's so many different ways and I don't know how to do any one of them really well. And that doesn't do anybody any good, right? If you're a parent, I want you to know that as teachers, it's our job to expose our students to multiple ways to solve the problem. And sometimes they even come up with their own way, which is really cool if it works every time and it makes sense mathematically. The goal is for students to lock in to the one that clicks for them, the one that they can master, the way that they can execute every time and make the least amount of mistakes, okay? And it just makes sense to them. I'm going to show you all three ways and I don't want you to get overwhelmed. So what I did as a teacher was I would show the three different ways to begin. We would maybe cover one way each day, expose them to it. My goal was not for them to master it. And then after I exposed them to the three methods, we infused the next bit of instruction with the ones that made sense to them. So some students really like the long division way, the standard algorithm. Some students really like the way that the area model breaks it down. Some students really like partial quotients. There is something that I do wanna point out though, and that is with standard algorithm, that's the one that they're going to see moving forward a lot more. Like in sixth grade, I've been looking at some sixth grade content, and when we get into division with decimals and all this stuff, like standard algorithm is the one that makes the most sense to be able to keep going with. So just, just to point that out. I hope that that helps, and I hope that I can help more as I break down each of these ways right now and stop rambling. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna start with standard algorithm. Okay, the way that we set that up is we have our dividend, which goes inside of this little, like under this bridge <laughs> kind of looking thing. And then our divisor goes outside. And for standard algorithm, there are some steps to take. Some people say divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. I like to say count by, multiply, subtract, bring down because that division having divide gets a little confusing for students. So the steps are count by, multiply, subtract, bring down. Those are the steps that I teach. If you use divide, if you're, you know, you like divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, that's fine too. Count by, here's what we're going to do. We're going to count by sixes until we get to three. Ready? Six. Oh dear. We already passed three. So guess what? It took zero times to get to three. So what we're going to do now is extend it to 39. Let's count by sixes until we get to 39. I'm gonna use the multiplication mashup song for this. This is a song that I have on YouTube to help students master their facts, just to help. So I'm gonna count by sixes till I get as close as I can to 39 without going over, okay? 6, 12, and 18, 24, and 30, 36. Because next would be 42, that's too much. So six times. I counted by, that was six times. 
Now I'm going to multiply. Six times six is 36. The next step is to subtract. 39 minus 36 is three. And then we bring down, bring down that seven. And now we repeat it until we finish. And because right here, this 37 is greater than our divisor right up here, we can keep going, we can repeat it. Okay, so let's count by sixes until we get to 37. 6, 12, and 18, 24, and 30, 36. We counted by, it was six times. And now when we multiply, that is six times six is 36. We subtract for our next step, which would be one. And then we bring down, but there's nothing up here to bring down. And look, right here, this one is smaller than our six, which means that we are, that means that we're finished, that's our remainder. Okay, so there's two ways that we can write this problem right now that we will focus on. It would be 66 with a remainder of one. And if you write it like this too, that's fine. 66 with a remainder of one, that's cool too. Or as a fraction would be 66 and to write it as a fraction, I do a little thing and I say started from the bottom, now we're here on top. That would be one. And then our divisor actually becomes the dividend. So it's one out of six. I'm sorry, the divisor becomes the denominator. So 66 and 1 sixth. You could also write this as a decimal, but we are not there yet with fourth grade. So we'll just keep it like this. And that would be the answer. And you could check this using multiplication by saying, okay, 66, which I always encourage you to do because students can make a lot of mistakes in, um, in, long, in division. So it's good to do, to do this. So if I were to... Check this out, that would be 396 plus our remainder of one is 397, that works out. This is just checking though, okay? But our answer is up here, our quotient. Woo, okay, that's one way. And you might be like, all right, I got this. I remember this from school. I'm just gonna highlight some of this right here just so you can spot the answers. Right there. Now I know it says that the area model is next, but I'm actually gonna move over to the partial quotients method and then come back. We set it up kind of similarly to our standard algorithm, except now we put a nice little line going down right here. Space. Let me move this over just a little bit so I can write down my steps that I'm gonna take here. Okay, so the steps are going to be that we count by multiply, include our zeros, subtract, and then we repeat, okay, until we get all the way done. You might be thinking, what in the world? Well, that's why we're going over this. Okay, so let's count by sixes until we can get to three. We know that we can't. So let's try to go to 39. Six, 12, and 18, 24, and 30, 36, and 42. That's not gonna work, so six times times six would be, now we multiply, 36. This is where we go ahead and we include some zeros though, because we can say, all right, six times six is 36, but I want it to be 360 right there. So to do that, I'm gonna make it times 60 over here. I include my zeros. Now I subtract, and that would be 37 remaining. Now, same thing, I repeat because 37, there's still groups of six that we can take out. So count by sixes till we get to 37, six, 12 and 18, 24 and 30, 36, 36, okay? That was six times, that was the multiplication step. Now I don't have any zeros to plug in there, so I'm just gonna subtract and that would be one left over. So now what I do is I add these up, 60, plus six would be 66. Again, what I was adding up is right here, 60 and six is 66 with a remainder of one, or again, 66 and one sixth. That is the partial quotients method. I actually really like that one, um, but again, I lean more towards the standard algorithm 
because especially when I get to like fifth grade, because in sixth grade, they really need to have a firm grasp on that one. Area model now. Same steps as the partial quotients. It looks like we're just kind of flipping it into a rectangle. Okay, we have 397. Now we follow the same steps as in partial quotient. We count by. So how many times does six go into three? It doesn't. Into 39 would be six times. So we could say six times. That would be 36. But we need a zero here. So six times 60 would give us that 360. Now we subtract. 37. Okay. Now what happens is we move this 37 up to here and we're counting by again. So you can see it's very similar to partial quotients. So count by six till we get to 37. That would be six times, which is 36. Subtract and we get one. Now what are we doing? We're adding up here. So that would be 60 and six, which would be 66 with our remainder of one again. Okay. And again, I cannot repeat this enough, but it is really important to make sure that you check using multiplication. I also, I also didn't do something that I encourage you, which is to estimate this, right? To find reasonable value. So let's see, let's keep the divisor of six, but say that this is close to 360, which would get us 60 as a, as an estimate up here. So when we arrive at 66 with a remainder of one, that makes sense. It's a reasonable value. Okay. All right. Woo. It's a lot going over all those three. It is a lot. If you need more practice with this skill or any other fourth grade skill, I'm about to break down some next steps that you can take. So stay tuned. I hope you found this episode to be helpful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. It's an easy way to support the content that I bring to you for free on YouTube. If you're a teacher or a parent, especially in Florida, you'll definitely want to check out McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Here is where I offer fast math freebies, including a playlist of fast math style problems and video lessons to support your teaching. For those ready to dive deeper, check out Taken on the Best, a monthly membership packed with video lessons, student guides, extra practice, error analysis videos, math tasks, mini assessments, and much more, which are all strategically aligned to Florida's best standards. With three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, you can choose the support that best fits your needs to promote student growth and skill mastery. Would you like to take taking on the best for a test drive? You can sample one standard per grade to find the right plan for you. Do that by simply requesting a free trial. And if you're gearing up for the final fast math assessment of the school year, definitely check out Taking on the Fast, a 15-day countdown series with video lessons and fast style math problems. Start with a sneak peek of day one, and when you're ready, you can make a one-time purchase. And if you're thinking about the gold plan for taking on the best, good news, taking on the fast is included in your membership. While many of my followers are in Florida, I know that there are teachers and parents everywhere looking for support. That's why I created McCarthy Math 155 with 155 video lessons for each grade level, third, fourth, and fifth. You can also sign up for a free trial to McCarthy Math 155 to explore it before signing up for a monthly membership. And finally, if you've enjoyed my math music videos on YouTube, you can also jam out to ad-free versions on my website. You can find all the links below and please feel free to email me with any questions that you have. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and make the world a little bit brighter in your own special way. See you next time.